Well, you know, we, we consider ourselves entertainers, um, but we don't limit it to music. Most of it's music, most of it's barbershop music, but we also like to uh, tell a few jokes to sort of lighten the mood. And um, I told Phil recently, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out of jokes. I'm tired of telling the same old jokes. And I, I said, how about you let me do a little bit of my, uh, my stand-up comedy routine? Um, and he said, well, do you have a stand-up comedy routine? And I said, well, I do now. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out on these uh, folks at Granite Farms. And he said, you know, you, you better be careful because stand-up comedy is very, very stressful. I said, is it stressful on me or is it stressful on the audience? And both. He said both. He said both. I said, those people at Granite Farms will be, will be nice about it. They'll be kind. They'll be generous. And then Mark said, well, I don't know if they will be. <laughs> But I'm going to take a chance anyway. You know, when we, when we prepare for a performance, we, of course, rehearse our song. We also talk about what costumes are, we're going to wear because we have different costumes. We talk about the shirts, the pants, the shoes. We even talk about the socks, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, who looks at socks, right? Um, you know, when I was a kid, my mother would say, you got to make sure your socks match. And I said, what difference does it make if your socks match? Nobody's. And then she'd come at me with the, what if you're in the accident line? <laughs> what, if, what, what if you're in an accident and they, and they, they take you to the hospital and everybody's going to know that your socks don't match? Uh, and I often wondered how that would play out. It would be something like this. I would get injured, get in the ambulance, get and go to the hospital, and this is urgent. The doctor's all excited. He said, get this man in the gurdy. Well, we got to start an IV with lidocaine drip. Come on, people, move, move. We're going to have to operate. Please, hurry. Oh, no. What is it, doctor? His socks don't match. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do. we got to do something. Well, we talked about it in medical school, but nobody ever thought it would actually happen. Well, doctor, we gotta do something. We can't just let him lay here. Okay, let me think. Oh, okay, let's see. We gotta find a matching sock. That's it. Look in the ambulance. Look in his bag. Look everywhere. We gotta find a matching sock. Well, which one should we pick, doctor? Well, I, I kind of like this one, um, the color of this one, but uh, the one on the right foot, I like the texture a little bit. Doctor, you're wasting time. Well, we should have listened to his mother. <laughs> well. My mother would also say, one of her favorite sayings was, the early bird gets the worm. You've heard that, right? You know, a lot of people think that comes from Ben Franklin, but it, it really doesn't. That, that saying, that quote, is it actually dates to the early 1600s, okay? So it's actually older than some of you folks here at Granite Farm. <laughs> Um, but I like the quote. I like the sentiment behind it. I like it says you got to get up, you got to get after it, you got to you, you got to get things done before everybody else even gets up. You know, a lot of energy behind it. What I don't like about it though is that it only gives you the perspective of the bird. What about the worm? <laughs> the worm got up early too. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been there for the bird. But how'd that work out for him, right? I mean. The bird is happy, but the worm is inside there waiting to be digested and deposited onto your windshield. <laughs> yeah, the bird's happy, but the, the worm's thinking, why did I set the alarm for 545? I should have slept in. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Any good? Yeah. Yeah. Good job.